for the 1983 Australian Grand Prix for 500 cc motorcycles. Number seven, Andrew Johnson on the new RS 500 cc Grand Prix bike based on Honda's NS 500, the machine that did so well in the 1982 World Championships. There with the square four water-cooled RGB 500cc Suzuki is Victorian, or, or should I say New South Welshman, Rob Phyllis from Albury just across the border. Alongside him on bike number 37 is Victorian rider Paul Lewis, just 22 years of age, a man who gave Andrew Johnson a big fright yesterday but couldn't get it together after seizing the bike at the bottom of the main straight and throwing himself down in the sand. Alongside him is tuner George Hughes from Victoria. Then we've got number 59, the man who's taken out this race here at Bathurst, Ron Bolden on the TZ500 Yamaha. Alongside him once again, we've got number 52, Gary Coleman. And this is going to be an extremely exciting and interesting event. 500cc Grand Prix for 1983, 15 laps, 92.58 kilometres, and everybody around the fence concentrating intently on the action that's going to be front them. Enormously wide gumball slick tyres are brought up to temperature that the brakes are operating correctly. We'll have some magnificent shots from the 028 chopper and somebody's down in the warm up, would you believe, as the yellow flag comes out. And that's because of the fact that riders go out there and push the bike too hard in the opening stages with cold tyres. That was number 94, Robert uh, Cardelli, 350cc TZ Yamaha. So a bad start to the Grand Prix for him. Andrew Johnson on bike number seven, rolling back to the starting line now at the end of the warm-up lap, ready for the 1983 Australian Grand Prix. He recorded a stunning time of 2 minutes 14.1 seconds in practice on the RS500cc Honda. Alongside him, Rob Phillips on the Suzuki with a 2 minutes 15.3. Paul Lewis with a 2.17.4. Ron Bolden, the first of the Yamahas, with a 2.19.4. Gary Coleman at 2.19.6, Tony Veach on the Suzuki with a 2.22.1, and surprisingly, Chris Oldfield on the TZ350 with a 2.24.7. Subsequent to that practice, Andrew Johnson has set a new outright lap record at Mount Panorama, 2.13.1 in yesterday's preliminary to today's Grand Prix. That's 0.7 of a second under the previous lap record set by Graham Crosby in 1979 on a 750cc Kawasaki. The bike's now ready to race. 15 laps of Mount Panorama, the Australian Grand Prix for 1983. In the starter's hands, Bolden with three wins under his belt on the trot, shooting for the fourth. And the race to boot in the Australian Grand Prix of the RS 500cc V4 water-cooled Honda. <laughs> Johnson and Phyllis, and it's Phyllis in the lead. Off the mountain straight for the first time. The first of 15 laps around the 6.172 kilometer course. The trickiest and the most spectacular motorcycle road racing meeting. Over the top and now through the right-hander at GDX and we can see some of the great aerial shots from the 028 chopper as they wind their way up the mountain. Johnson on the RS500 Honda V3. Scraping his knee through the corner and Paul Lewis in second position has taken over from Rob Phillips. And Lewis is the man who's the real danger to Andrew Johnson in this race. And it was Lewis who put all sorts of pressure on Andrew Johnson in the Western Underwriters 1000 event yesterday. And look at Phyllis and Johnson or should I say Phyllis and Lewis as they battle their way down the mountain. Lewis incidentally not having any sleep at all last night, working on the machine until 7.30 this morning after a seizure where they've had to replace three pistons, a new cylinder barrel. They've gone richer by two main jets in the carburation on the machine. They've had to change the back axle after bending it severely when he locked up the brake at the end of the main straight. So it's been a dramatic evening for the rider on bike number 37 who's currently in second place, Paul Lewis over the humps and watch Andrew Johnson as he aviates the Honda 
under the bridge on the brakes and it's bike number seven being followed there by Paul Lewis on bike number 37 Rob Phyllis from uh, Albury in New South Wales in third place on number 32 and Phyllis wandering a little wide on that occasion as he came down through Murray's corner and the standing lap time of 2 minutes 18.4 for Andrew Johnson lap 1 14 to go Lewis in second Phyllis in third so it's Honda leading two Suzuki's seconds the gap back to Ron Bolden, the defending Australian 500 CC champion. He's in fourth position. The time into the pits is number 24, Chris Oldfield, on the TZ350, so bad luck for Chris after being as high as fifth on the grid. And up to the top of the mountain once again. And a rider who's got off the escape road at the end of pit straight. The marshals going across to be of some assistance to that rider. That's on the left-hand approach to Mountain Strait. It's number 64. And that's Malcolm Wood from Victoria, who's also on a TZ350 Yamaha. He seems to be quite all right and on his feet as we go back to our leader. And it's still number seven, Andrew Johnson. A similar machine to the machine that Team Honda have been running in the 1982 World Championships and the same type of machine that Freddie Spencer has just used to win the first round of the 1983 500cc World Championships. And the seventh bike to come off the production line as far as these RS 500cc production Grand Prix machines are concerned, that is that the race teams around the world as a part of the Honda organization are able to buy from the factory in Japan and still that scrap continues for second and third between Lewis and Phyllis and that's going to be one that's a furious battle as the race draws on. Up over the first half Andrew Johnson behind him comes the dice for second position between Lewis on the blue bike and Phyllis on the red and orange machine and Lewis isn't going to be enjoying this at all. He needs to be right on Andrew Johnson's tail. He needs to break away from Rob Phyllis and go for broke to get up on Johnson. And now he tries it in the braking area, just marginally pulling away from Rob Phyllis. Phyllis not keen to let him go. Both of these bikes had trouble during the practice session on Friday when they were misfiring, coming over the final hump in Conrad Strait. And Lewis has been rather disgruntled all weekend that he hasn't been able to pull the maximum 11,000 RPM on the RGB Square 4 500cc Suzuki. And when it does reach that peak revs of 11,000, it's capable of doing some 299 kilometres per hour with the current gearing configuration. And then the big crocodile chain for fourth position. That's Ron Bolden leading Tony Beach with Gary Coleman, the second of the Yeshiva uh, Yamaha team bikes in sixth position. On to the top of the mountain, and it's still Andrew Johnson on bike number seven. And as he winds his way across the top of Castrol Curb, we had the opportunity earlier on in the practice session to talk to Andrew Johnson about his new bike and his chances in the Grand Prix of 1983. Andrew Johnson from Victoria coming to Bathurst this weekend with Honda's brand new RS 500cc Grand Prix works machine. Andrew, it's a very exciting motorcycle. Yes, that it is now. It's, um, it hasn't been sorted out completely as yet. The bike's still in testing stages, but so far everything's looking very good. It's, uh, I could say it is maybe one of the fastest bikes here at Mount Panorama. Uh, I'm pulling excess of 190 miles an hour down Conrod, but I'm having a bit of trouble keeping the front wheel down at this stage. Um, it wants to go up vertical. I could well imagine it's got an enormous amount of horsepower and we could see coming along pit straight here near the pits, the bike absolutely flying. Andrew, what sort of preparation have you had to put into an event such as this? As a rider or as a team? Oh, as a rider and a team. As a rider you have to um, dedicate yourself at, um, nearly 100% for Mount Pamarama because it's, most, well, it's our fastest track. Um, in Australia and um, it's well known as notorious and dangerous. Uh, you have to shut a lot of fear out of yourself otherwise you'll just go backwards here. You can't have any fear otherwise it's not worth racing. Uh, as a team it's just many, many, many hours of hard work and lots of dollars and Honda Australia put so much effort into it. Uh, they deserve to win but uh, so do other people. Andrew Johnson coming up to the accident scene with the ambulance on the course. That's the reason he slowed down last time, so there's no problem with the bike. But there is a little drama at the top of the mountain at the moment as the crews work to rectify the problem clearing the track. But it's Johnson down the other side of the mountain once more, coming down from the top of the 850 metre climb from the pit straight. Up through Reed Park, second position being decided between Lewis and Phyllis. Lewis still in the lead. 
come up to the accident site, however, at McPhillamy Park, that incredibly brave left-hand sweeper, and they will have to slow substantially. The ambulance is there. And then straight into it again. Instant reflexes to get back on the tower and see if you can pick up a momentary advantage as you come out of the yellow flag jurisdiction. First Yamaha still being ridden by Ron Bolden in fourth place, who's now three quarters of a lap behind these riders. There's the leader on the right hand side of screen. Under brakes. And Johnson will get the blue flag at the end of this lap to indicate that he has just 6.2 kilometres remaining in the Australian Grand Prix for 1983. Second and third, Lewis and Phyllis. Only one lap remaining to resolve this incredible dice for second position as well. And this time, Phyllis closes under brakes at the bottom of Conrad, and he knows now that he too has only one lap remaining in which to claim at least second position in the Grand Prix. Now watch Phyllis, because he's the man who has the most to gain. He's right behind Paul Lewis. He's within slip streaming distance. Lewis looks over his shoulder and realises that, and he'll try and shake him out as he wanders across to the left-hand side of the road. And can Robbie Phyllis make up that gap between himself and Paul Lewis to take over second place? There's no way known that he's going to get near Andrew Johnson, who's going to take out the event barring any incident. And there it is, number seven, Andrew Johnson, past the accident scene. You can see there the white flag with the red cross, which indicates to the riders the ambulance is still on the course. Johnson now almost in a position where he can afford to coast home. And it's 37 and 30 still, uh, 32 still the order. Lewis and Phyllis, and Phyllis gets very close now to the back of Paul Lewis as they come ripping down the mountain, and this is going to be a heart stopper to the finish. There's Johnson, midway down the straight. Yellow flag out. But he's going to bag this one, so Andrew Johnson comes down now over the final hump, and look at the scrap for second and third as they use every centimetre of the road. And Andrew Johnson on bike number seven, under brakes now, through the left hand, and the crowd is absolutely screaming for Andrew Johnson. AJ, as they call him, and he comes under the chequered flag of the James Hardy Bridge and takes out the 1983 Australian 500cc Grand Prix. Let's go back to second and see all the action now under brakes. It's Lewis in the lead in the blue and yellow, Phyllis in third place in the red and yellow, and I think Paul's got it. Around the left-hander, Phyllis using everything, and Lewis pops a, uh, pops a wheelie, but the chequered flag comes out, and that's the way it stays. So Paul Lewis, second in the Grand Prix, and Rob Phyllis, third, after a magnificent win yesterday in the RI 500. Well, John, a fantastic battle for the minor placings, but certainly unbelievable domination from the brand-new Honda. Well, a great double to Team Honda, and they deserve all the accolades in the world for winning yesterday the RI 500 Endurance Classic and today the Australian 500cc Grand Prix.